Hey there everyone, Mazarok here, and today I want to go over the Season 4 Raid Vendors for strength-based uh, tanks. We're going to go over them, good options, and kind of break them down, Warrior Paladin and uh, Death Knight, and I'm going to be doing a follow-up video for agility-based tanks. Uh, you can expect that one coming out tomorrow as of the drop of this video. Through them, through them and kind of get, have a decent chat, so that way you can pick the right ones for you and just give you a framework uh, upon what you want to pick as you complete these quests. Before we get started, please like, comment, subscribe. It goes such a long way towards helping the channel and I'm hugely appreciative of all, all the support that everyone's been giving me. If you see any LVI profiles or weak ores on stream, stream that you like or you'd like to continue this conversation, Discord link is down below where you can get all that for free. And as well, there's a Twitch link down below where I've been on stream constantly. There's a key review link there as well, and a Patreon link if uh, that, is, that is of any interest to you. So let's get into the Season 4 Shadowlands Raid Vendors. So, once you complete your quest, you killed X amount of individual bosses. I think the tuning number was going to change a little bit. I'm not 100% sure on that, so we'll see what that is. But once you complete your quests, you're going to be able to select three items from these vendors. There's a Castle Nathria vendor, there's a Sanctum of Domination vendor, and there's a Sepulchre vendor. So you're going to be able to pick which shield, weapon, and trinkets you want, but you only get a max of three. So choosing is going to be very, very important to you. So that way, you know, you pick the right ones, or the, you pick the ones you want the most, and you don't fall into a trap, and you regret one of your picks, because that would just be unpleasant. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to start off with Warrior. We're going to start off with the base. I'm going to go over kind of the base ones for that, you know, every tank can get. But then we're going to do Warrior and Prop Paladin, because they have the same weapon loadout, and kind of the same sort of build, but I will talk about each one of them separately a little bit. And we're going to go over DK, and then we're going to go over the agility classes as well. So... Going into the it's Castle clear. Anathria you Vendor. The now, there's a couple of decent trinkets here uh, that you can work with. There's the Splintered Heart of Alar, which is the cheat, which is a cheat death, but it also can kill your party members. I've seen quite a few people who never do PvP get PvP <laughs> achievements by proccing this trinket with too many people in melee and killing. There's a, I think there's a PvP. Uh, uh, there's a PvP achievement where, like, if you kill one person of each covenant, <laughs> I've seen this actually pop off in raids. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, so if you're going for a cheat death trinket, I probably recommend the one from Sanctum. But, you know, if you want to go with the Splinter Heart of Alar, you can do that. Stone Legion Heraldry is not going to be a terrible trinket, although I think the value of certain stat sticks in Mythic Plus are going to kind of devalue themselves a little bit. Due to the fact that you're going to be able to get much, much more um, versatility and stuff like that from the affix itself. So, this is not a bad option if you're working with a couple of other people that are stacking Stone Legion Heraldry, but I'd be cautious on this pick. I'd stay away from the, the, the music sheet. It sucks as a tank. I don't like it at all. That's pretty much just me. The Gluttonous Spike and the Memory of Past Sins are offensive based. Not terrible, not great. There's better offensive trinkets for you. A trap pick, I think, is the Sanguine Vintage. I've seen some people talking about this. And uh, so what it does is at item level 285, it absorbs up to 45k damage for six seconds and it will heal you for 200% of the shield's remaining amount. The wording on this sounds great, but if we go over to a 278 blood spattered scale, you're getting a barrier for 65k at item level 278. Now, yes, I know we're not getting another blood spattered scale because DOS is going away. I'm pretty sure. Like, I've been hearing some rumors that we're gonna be able to get some stuff, but like, I don't really know where that's coming from, so we'll see what happens. And it deals damage to everyone. The Sanguine Vintage does not deal damage. This will scale up higher, probably ending at where this 278 is. But the problem is, is even a 278 Blood Spout of Scale, once you reach content high enough, the shield doesn't last. It gets just wrecked through on tank busters, on big pulls, and you're almost never going to seal the, see the heal on this trinket actually kind of get used at all ever and on top of that when the shield does let's say it does heal you 
you're fighting with your healer on whether or not they, you need heals. So it's going to kind of overlap with like overhealing and stuff. This, I feel, is kind of a trap trinket for pretty much all tanks. Unless you absolutely want a purely defensive absorb shield trinket and you have nothing better and this is what you want to run, okay. You're going to get some absorb use out of this. You're going to get some defensive use. I just think this is a little bit more of a trap pick than it is a decent pick. Because you can see here, well, I've got both like both of them up on screen, right? The Blood Spattered Scale has a huge absorb and an offensive component to it with the shadow damage that it deals. So, you're going to have to take a pick. I still think the Blood Spattered Scale is going to see widespread use in, uh, in Season in, in season 4. Uh, sorry, my bag add-on does not want to work in the uh, PTR. A decent option as well for uh, prot war so uh, for prot warriors and paladins is this uh, Moria's spare charge. The haste versatility is really good for prot warriors, so, and I like and I like the mog. It the mog looks pretty sweet. Although this does drop off the first boss of Terror Groove, so this is something that you may be able to farm out. And there's other haste verse shields in the game in these raids as well. So maybe not something you want to thoroughly focus on, but whatever. One trinket that I think did does not get enough talk is the Shield of Inhaled is Aegis. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly. Um, I think the 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 Shard of Inhaled is Aegis. I don't know how you pronounce Enhilde. Um, I'm kind of just going by what I think it is, but could be anything. This trinket is insanely solid. And when you read it, you're kind of like, okay, it only, it's absorb is only 10.8k at 278. That's 2.8, uh, 2.8, 10.8k every hit. And it is infinite. So while this trinket might not be great for tank busters, where something like the Blood Spatter Scale, if you need an emergency defensive, is fantastic for, Shield of Inhilda's Aegis is really, really good in situations where you pull big. You pull a lot of little mobs. Nothing hits you hard, but the danger in the pull is all of the crazy amount of little hits because there is no cap on this trinket. Zero cap. For eight seconds... Every hit that comes in from every mob gets reduced by 10.8k, and it does have an offensive co component where if it deal if it does absorb X amount of damage, it'll expel a holy holy damage to all enemies in a frontal cone. The damage is admittedly minimal. It is on a one and a half minute cooldown, which makes this very viable in Mythic Plus. Uh, I was using this as well when I was raiding in Shadowlands for, like, let's say, uh, when you're fighting Sylvanas, the Heart Seeker's uh, ability, the arrow, the one of the kind of tank bustery things, where it just hits you three times. This on Mythic version in Heroic would literally negate that mechanic, where I could just hit it at the right time and get a bunch of those Heart Seekers and literally take zero damage. And that's kind of one of those things to have to worry about. This trinket is insanely solid. Now, you can get this off of the 9 in Sanctum. So, it's not the most difficult boss to get it on a high end. So, if you're, you know, rating Heroic or Mythic at all, the first three bosses in Sanctum of Domination aren't the most aren't the most difficult and can be done with, you know, a decently coordinated group. And the 9, I mean, honestly, when I when we were doing it, I had more trouble. We had more trouble with the eye than we did the 9 on uh, in Mythic. So, something to look at but this if you do not get this in your first week and you are looking for a very very good defensive trinket the shard of the hill is aegis is absolutely fantastic then looking here we have some one handers and some maces so unless you're specifically looking for a weapon uh, or a shield i really wouldn't worry about it too much a trinket that Paladins and Warriors and Death Knights, we'll get to Death Knights in a bit, is the Old Warrior's Soul. So this is going to be at item level 285. It increases your haste every, by 50 every 20 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. So that is 250 haste. I think it lasts for 15 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. So this is one where you want to play aggressively and stay in combat in Mythic Plus and constantly go, so you do not lose the stack of this buff, because it does take... A uh, minute 40, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, a minute 40 to really ramp itself up. But as long as you're constantly going and you're not stopping and starting to the point where this buff falls off, this is... Er, I, 
Yeah, it's every 20 seconds. I don't know, I can't remember if this one, if you get one stack right when combat starts and then 20 seconds later. So it either takes a minute 20 or a minute 40, but either way, it does take X amount of time to ramp up. Anything over a minute to ramp up is something you don't want to let fall off while you're in combat. But for warriors who love haste a lot, this is going to be fantastic, and Paladins also really like haste as well. So for basically for any raid encounter, this is going to be very good for you offensively and defensively for both Paladins and... Uh, Paladins and Warriors. Uh, if you're looking for a DPS option for Warriors, the Jathus Prison Blade is going to be there. I think Fury Warriors are going to be crazy solid with being able to equip a Jathus and a Gavel. Uh, I'm pretty sure they can, but yeah. Super solid, but if you're looking for the uh, the Cheat Death Chanket I was talking about, uh, the Weave of Warped Fates is going to be preferably... This is, this is the one that I would go with because it's a safer pick where you don't kill people when you die, or they don't take damage, adding more stress on your healer. Uh, the Reactive Defensive Matrix, this one here is not bad, but it's not, I don't find it was great for Warriors and Paladins. We'll get into who I think it's good for a little bit later. I just, I never had a lot of success with this trinket, although it's not terrible. I just think there's better options for you to pick with what you've got. And then we will go over to the Sanctum of Domination. There's a lot of great Mog here, you know, I really do like the, the Sepulchre Saver, I don't have this one, but I, I kind of, I really like that Mog, um, but if you're looking for Trinkets, there's not a whole lot, I would probably go with a First Sigil, First Sigil is incredibly solid in Raid, although for Tanks, it's not super great in Mythic Plus, the 5 minute cooldown kind of really hurts it, but it does give you a big burst of damage and, a damage and damage reduction, every five minutes and uh, especially on like things like uh, necrotic weeks will give you an extra stack of file if you're working with uh, if you work if you're playing a carrying covenant and things like that um, if you're play if you're looking to play an absorb base build you could go with a pocket protoforge or a pulsating rift shard pulsating rift shard is a one minute cooldown it does comparable damage with blood the blood scale the thing is is it's pretty much halved right so while not bad, it's also not great. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's one of those things where if you can farm it off Zymax, Zymox and Sepulchre, you can make decent use of this in Mythic Plus. I currently run Pocket Protoforge on a couple of tanks sometimes, depending on the key and the affixes and how dangerous um, those affixes are to some of my tanks. And the Pocket Protoforge as well does a comparable amount of healing to Blood Scale. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but around the same amount. But Pocket Protoforge is uh, proc based so it's kind of your choice uh it's not your choice and pulsating wrist shard give, does give you an absorb shield every minute so you do have a trinket for every single pull which is really really nice now i'm not going to go ahead and say and take this uh but i think this trinket is a little underrated especially with how good some of the other trinkets are so for warrior my picks would definitely be old warrior soul is an absolute must for your trinkets. This is going to be incredibly solid in Raid and Mythic Plus. And then the rest are kind of up to you with you what you want. You want to be more offensive minded? Do you want to be more defensive minded? That's going to be your choice. Uh, but there's no great weapon picks for uh, Protection Warrior and Protection Paladin. Pretty much the one you're going to want to focus on is Old Warrior Soul, and then you have two flex options. So if you like to flex on DPS sometimes, uh, you can go with the Jathus and a Gavel, and you don't necessarily need to feel too bad. You're going to have to farm out some other trinkets, but those are kind of more easily done. The Old Warrior Soul is only accessible off Sylvanas, so being able to have one drop chance every week, uh, every three weeks, sorry, on a trinket that I never seen drop almost. Like, uh, I was playing Paladin, Warrior, and DK in Sanctum, and I had never once seen this trinket drop in raid ever. So this is one that you're gonna wanna focus on, but there's no unique weapons or anything for prop Paladin or prop Warrior that you're gonna wanna have to focus on, so that's there. Let's move on to Death Knight. But now we have the struggle, or what the actual decision for Death Knight is going to be. Do you want a Jathus? Or do you want clear. You a Gavel of the First the Ones? Best. Gavel of the First Ones is very good offensively every four minutes. And will most likely outperform Jathus. Straight up, offensively, will probably, depending on tuning, outperform Jathus. Jathus, I think even with 
the current eye level bump and things like that. Now, Jathus, where it's going to provide you um, more defensive benefit, is the strength prot. Uh, proc, proc that comes off of it once you have this thing max level. Now it does. J, the nice thing with Jathus is it is a big haste stat as well as a critical strike. So critical strike is meh, but the haste on it is very very nice. So it does give you one of your main stats off the bat. And once you because the way this this one works is you consume a lesser lesser weapon, destroying it to utterly feed the power of Jathus. You do this five times, and there's like a not item level 250 or whatever it was back in Sanctum, it was a 535 strength uh, proc that you would get, and it would proc really frequently. It also has a damage shadow base proc. So, this is one that as of recording this, I think Jathus is going to be better defensively, and Gavel is going to be better offensively, but I don't think by much. I think with the tuning of Jathus, now this is just... Pure speculation, I think Jathus might be the prefer all-around pick, where Gavel is going to be the situational better pick. You know what I mean? In niche scenarios or certain dungeons where the the cooldown of Gavel works out where every four minutes you're pulling really big and things like that, you're gonna get more value out of that. But I think so. When we're when we're actually able to choose, now this is going to be three weeks into season four, so we're looking almost end of August. Uh, I'm gonna do some more theory crafting. I'm gonna delve into this to help you make a better pick. But as it sits now, I think Jathus is going to be the better all-around pick, and the Gavel's gonna be the more offensive pick. So that's going to be something you're going to want to, you know, look into yourself. As well as there's some decent trinket options: the Shield of Inhaled Ages, fantastic trinket option all around, and the Weave of Warped Fates. I think those are kind of so you got some things to pick here on Blood DK and some decisions to make uh, <laughs> on what you want to do. Uh, but there's definitely a lot of good options for you in uh, Sanctum and in Sepulchre. Oh, and then we're going to go sense. over to Castle Nathria, where I just don't think there's enough here to be worthwhile for Castle Nathria for trinkets. And there's no good weapons for... Uh, at all. There's no... Because <laughs> there were, the, there were the, 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 the token drops. So, really, that's what you're going to have to look forward to. Let's move over to the uh, agility classes. <laughs> 